think 12 movies that I've starred in over the course of my career that never even got released. Are you kidding? 12, <laughs> never even got released? Hey, this is Kara, and you're watching Really Famous. Of course, it's the place where you get to know your favorite celebrities on a super intimate level because I was a therapist. Today I have Alessandro Nivola on the show. He plays the lead role in the new Sopranos prequel, The Many Saints of Newark. He plays Dickie Moltisanti, who of course is the father of Christopher Moltisanti, played by Michael Imperioli in the original Sopranos series, who I have had as a guest on Really Famous several times. And Alessandro and I talk about that. If you wanna catch those interviews, I put links in the description below. Click on those when you're done or before, or put a note, bookmark them, whatever, they're really interesting interesting conversations too. Anyway, we get into a lot of very interesting topics here today with Alessandro. Let's do it. What about Ray Liotta? I saw he's in it and he's amazing. He, I've been trying to get him on my show, by the way, for like years. <laughs> I'm fascinated by him. How was he? Uh, he was, um, you know, he's an eccentric guy. I, you know, of everybody involved, he was the person I was probably most intimidated by and, and most wanted to impress, both because of his kind of, you know, he's part of mob movie royalty. Uh, I mean, his performance in Goodfellas is one of the, one of the greats. And then also because he was the only person in the whole group of our cast who was actually from New Jersey, from an Italian family in New Jersey, and like had really kind of um, grown up in the kind in in the world of the of the movie. Not that he'd grown up as a as a you know part of a organized crime or anything like that, but that you know that he he lived in that part of the world and and in that kind of um, uh, culture and and so you know, of everybody, he was the person I was most shy about feeling like he, that, that uh, he, I was most frightened of him thinking that I was an imposter somehow. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and he's kind of inscrutable. He's very, very committed as an actor. And I think he has like real respect and fascination for acting and for the process of people's work on ca character work. And um, I felt him in the early days of, of our working together, really kind of um, fi fixing on me. And he has, you know, an intense stare <laughs> and I just felt him watching me. And I just, I, I knew he was kind of trying to assess whether, you know, this was going to work and and if I, uh, you know, was was um, going to be able to deliver or not, and and then I got a text from him uh, a couple weeks in where he he said that uh, you know something I I can't remember exactly how it went. It's something like you know great work today. You reminded me of myself as Henry Hill, and. Uh, you know, that was kind of the moment that I felt like, okay, I'm onto something here. And um, uh, it really like just gave me a huge confidence boost to, to hear that from him. And then, and then I lost my phone and something got screwed up with the iCloud and that text was forever lost. Oh. <laughs> so maybe I dreamt it. Maybe it didn't really happen. No, it happened. That stinks. So <laughs> we're, all, wanna... we're all liars, right? <laughs> yeah. No one will ever know. You have to screenshot those things like the second they happen so that you know, <laughs> boom, I've got that forever. I know. Uh, I feel like maybe I sent it to my agents or something. I got to call them up and see if they <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that, I can imagine that totally propels you at that point. If you have that imposter syndrome you're dealing with, which everybody does, of course. But if that that was at the beginning of when you were shooting, so that took you forward. Yeah, I mean, you know, and it always like those first days uh, on the set are always the most kind of delicate and uh, scary because you just are, uh, you know, you've 
created this whole, you've created the character in your own imagination and everything, but having to have it, to, to interact with other people and what these relationships are, are like, it, it can, it, it can, it can expose it as something that is really working or, or not. And um, yeah, so the right in those early days, I, I, I definitely needed something like that. Yeah. I mean, you can't ask for anything better than that. Honestly, if you could dream up one thing to say, or one thing that some person would say to you at the beginning of taping, that would be it. Although I did also read what David Chase said about you, that he had his eye on you. Can I read it? I wrote it down. I think this was in the Rolling Stone feature. I mean, you probably read uh, okay. it. But uh, I, haven't for everybody else. I haven't read it yet, so I'm not okay. sure. I'm I'm, I'm scared to hear what this Don't, is. don't be scared. This is all, all right. good. So David okay. Chase said, I remember Alessandro from American Hustle and the most violent year, says Chase. I always thought he was great and he's Italian. I thought, where has this guy been? Why doesn't he get jobs? And I decided to get him a job. <laughs> That's, I mean, come on, people. So now you have Ray Liotta and David Chase, like, What's well, it was, the, you know, the, the cool thing about this, this whole movie was such an unlikely thing. I see the, the I, I kind of see the movie as like a, a Trojan horse where um, these kind of movies aren't made anymore, really, like a kind of mid-level studio drama. Um, these are movies that were made up through the 80s and into the 90s, and then it doesn't happen anymore. I mean, all the studio movies are now franchise stuff. And so they they occasionally pick up stuff at film festivals and distribute them, but they, they, don't, they don't finance and make these kinds of movies. And it only happened because of the, the branding of the show. And... Uh, and then on top of that, I, you know, I would never have been, I, I, I would never have, the studio would never have allowed me to play this part if it hadn't been for the fact that they were selling the movie off of the notoriety of the show, as opposed to off of the name value of its lead actor. And, um, and that was what allowed David Chase and Alan Taylor to cast whoever they want. Mm -hmm. And if it hadn't been for the for for that, uh, they wouldn't they wouldn't have allowed them to cast me. So, um, you know, it, it really was like such a, a one in a million kind of situation. They're just like, if you look at the slates of all the studio movies, there's just nothing like this on there. Yeah. And it, it's it was like snuck in under the guise of being a, you know, spinoff or whatever of, of a well-branded IP. And, and in fact, it's a, it's a really kind of classic kind of movie um, that, that isn't made by the studios anymore. Right, right. And we're all lucky that it's, that it got made. Like, thank God for that, right? I mean, I'm yeah. glad about that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, like, I, I, I couldn't believe even that I had the opportunity to, audition for it when when it came up because um these kinds of as i said like they just don't make these movies right. anymore so, i mean they make them independently but then there's a whole other set of problems you know they, they then the the audience that they're geared toward is much smaller and more niche and um they uh you don't have any guarantee of of them being picked up and well distributed and they, there's often not enough yeah. money to give it the kind of production value that this movie had and i mean i've been down this road so many times okay. i i think i've st i've counted i think 12 movies that i've starred in over the course of my career that never even got released are you kidding 12 <laughs> never even got released what well, where are they i mean I, well here i'll get up my IMDB page and I'll tell you I'll read them out and uh, and uh, we'll you'll see if you've ever heard of these things they, okay. you can because they never and and these were like big starring roles you know that I spent months preparing for and 
often that I'm really proud of my work in and stuff and just never. Okay, so it started with That was Alessandra Nivola. I hope you enjoyed this talk. If you did, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to tap on that subscribe button so you're notified every time I drop a new video, which is usually twice a week on Sundays and Fridays. If you like this talk, you will probably like the talks that I mentioned in the show. My talks with Michael Imperioli and Tim Daly, Talia Shire. You can definitely watch all of them too. You may just have to search for them on my channel, which of course is called Really Famous. Um, so if you have thoughts about this talk, if you have thoughts about the show, thoughts about The Sopranos, anything, drop a comment. I do read them. I like to know what you're thinking and uh, what you think of the show. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.